So we're here on the show floor of uh, Rabbit 2018 in beautiful uh, Fort Worth. And um, we've been looking at a variety of uh, 3D printed products these last few days. And I'm over here at the Speed, th uh, Speed 3D exhibit. And this does not look like the normal 3D printed uh, stuff that I've seen. It's, it's kind of lumpy. So why why is that? We got Steve Camilleri from Speed... Uh, Speed 3D? Yeah. What's up with these strange looking parts? So this is a new process. Yep. We produce these parts without using a laser, without using any heat. And we, uh, what we have is a, is a rocket engine. We bring compressed air a what? Rocket, a rocket engine. A, a real, rocket a, engine. A rocket engine. I, yep. thought, I just wanted to make sure I heard yep. you. Yep. I get that a lot, don't worry. So um, that rocket engine produces compressed air at about Mach 3 supersonic. Right. We add the metal powder to that, and uh, what that means is we can produce these kind of parts super cheap and super fast. So this part here, it's an aluminum pulley. Right. Uh, we can make that in about 20 minutes. So I can give 20 you minutes? 20 minutes after uh, you tell me what one of these I can give it to now, you. Now, I know what a powder bed machine would take. That would be 20 hours? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. What's that, about a pound maybe? Yeah. More. And uh, I can do that for about 10 bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah. So this is. So that's almost competitive with the casting. It's designed to be competitive with casting. You're, you're, so if you're doing short turnaround or a small run casting, this will do. This will save you a lot of money. And that's the idea: is that um, we can just place casting with this kind of process. Uh, now, what 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 types of metals do you print, and how is this? In terms of strength, comparable to a casting. All right, so this we, we're happy to tell you that this will do better than a 356 grade, which is the federal uh, standard here for a, a particular high-performance casting grade. This material is better than 356, so if you've got a part that's made with 356 or 319, this will work. 319 um, steel. Yeah, uh, aluminum. Aluminum, I'm sorry. Aluminum, okay. Yeah. So that, that's good. Um, the other material we do here is copper. So we're actually printing these at the show. So right. I don't know if anyone's ever printed metal parts while you wait out the show before. I think we might be the first no, one doing that. No, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. So we'll print this in about 11 and a half minutes. Okay. That's quite a heavy, it's copper part, and uh, we do it for about six bucks. And how isotropic is, is, the, is the process? We get fantastic performance from our material. So okay. this, uh, this process of smashing. Okay, the okay, let's, you know, fantastic. That sounds yep. like something our president would use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, do you mean, what do you mean by fantastic? In the case of copper, we're getting, when you're doing copper, people care about conductivity. They want to know about electrical and thermal conductivity. Sure. We get better than 85% of IATS, which is the copper standard used in laboratories. Wow. So what that means is this can, this is useful for utilities, motors, transformers. Right. This is a very, very good conductive okay. material. And, and your aluminum? Uh, we, said, we don't measure conductivity. No, no, I didn't mean yet. conductivity, but I mean the the isotropic pro properties, yeah. you know, strength. Oh, yeah. So we, we only tell you about the bad direction. We don't tell you about the good direction. Okay. Nobody wants to know about the good direction. They want right. to know about the bad direction. And that would be the Z is the good direction? The Z is the bad direction. Bad? Yeah. Really? Z is the bad direction. So we give you, uh, we say 33 KSI and 3%. That's the that's the V56 standard. Wow. Um, so that'll, okay. that'll mean this, this can be used for your engine blocks, cylinder heads, wheels, transmission housings. Suspension components. Suspension components. So regular AM doesn't touch any of those. We're, we're in a okay. new market so, niche. So you could spray up a... a a uniquely shaped yep. product and then and then do the final machining exactly the idea is that this works like a casting process right normally it's cast and machine that's how you get your engineered part in this case right. it's print and machine okay and we can shortcut that process somewhat by getting the software hooks into the cnc process and, and, and really cutting down on okay the time. and print times measured in minutes on this yep. machine that's right i i you know if you were, hadn't spent like a bunch of money to come to this show yep I, I, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to question whether this was just a bunch of snake oil, but exactly. so you're going to show me how this works. We are, yes. Okay, well, let's wander over to the machine. Yep, we're about to run it right now. So here we are watching the Speed 3D printer blow, blow uh, copper onto the bottom of the plate uh, at what appears to be an alarming rate. So this thing's doing metal. At a, at a speed that would make a that would make a, a a fused deposition, you know, polymer machine have a heart attack. Um, I I just don't know what to say, but I'm having fun watching it. We'll uh, we'll tune in a minute. I'm gonna pause this thing. So what we've got is a uh, 
uh, an ABB ro ro uh, robotic arm connected up to a, uh, a, a little mandrel there. And, uh, and then what, what our host described is a ro that rocket engine blowing copper onto the deposition plate. And he says it takes about 11 minutes. Uh, we can get a better shot of it over here on the uh, on the uh, on the video monitor, on the control panel. So we'll just uh, give you a video of a video for a moment. And let's see how much time. It, <laughs> it's been printing for about three minutes, and it's almost 20% complete. So, so Steve, you're saying that this is intended to go right on a production floor exactly. and replace a casting. Exactly. So we designed this process to obsolete casting. Yeah. Casting's been around for 5,000 years. We think it's probably right. time for something new. Yep. And uh, this process is actually cheaper than casting. If you've cheaper got a, than casting. If you've got a casting process that you're running all day, every day, yep. people are specializing in making that process work and making the same parts, right. we won't compete the cost. Keep doing that the same way. Right. If you're trying to do stuff in low volume, a few hundred, around, a few dozen to a few hundred. Yep. And the good thing about this is, uh, let's say you're making a motorbike. Right. You don't have to worry about buying two tons of every component. You just make all the components one after print, the other. Print on, oh. Right there on the line with the same right. machine. Okay. Now, yep. your, your cost is going to be higher because it's a powdered metal versus like... Uh, uh, yeah. You, so, so, the, the base material cost is higher. Yeah. Um, but we use a very cheap powder. We, we use simple powdered metal energy style. Right. Uh, so we're talking... Uh, like it's, the copper we're using is 7 bucks a pound. Seven bucks a pound for copper, and that's in low quantity bought in the retail in Australia. Okay, and the and the aluminum, the aluminum, the aluminum again bought retail in like quantity right. seventeen bucks a pound. Seventeen bucks a pound. Yep. So, and that re replaces all of the casting costs. So all the casting. So the casting cost is, is the raw material is cheaper. Right. But the process cost. Is quite yeah, when you're casting. making a plug and everything else. There's a lot of labor in casting. The 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 thing I'm going to ask you is: yep. Are there limitations to shape? You can't do freestanding things. Uh, well, it's no problem. We have a substrate that we have to start with. Right. Um, but we can pop the part right off the substrate. Yeah, no, what I meant... Can the substrate. Okay, oh, you can do stuff yeah. like that. And what is that, by the way? This thing? Yeah. This is an automotive upright. Oh, so okay. normally the wheel goes here, the wheel bearing here, and you know, suspension and steering. Okay. Yep. Cool. So there there are there are limits to this, but yeah. they're, they're far broader than... All right, we'll pause till we see the thing come out. Yeah. It's about it's about ten minutes later, and and there's a part. Holy mackerel! Come on, let, here, go ahead and take her out. Oh my God! There it is. Um, and look, that, just like the last one. Yeah, just like the last one. Um. Oh, where are you? There you are. Okay. Right. Let me now, I don't want to run this tape too long, but. How large will this machine make? How large a product will this machine make? So it's a foot by a foot by a foot and about eight pounds. Uh, let's close. Um, about what? About a foot by a foot by a foot and eight pounds. Eight pounds and a foot by.